Hi folks, Darren from Protopilot here. So in this episode, I'm gonna be showing you how to build a graphic equalizer style animation, a bit like what you might see in Spotify. I'm pretty sure the Spotify one doesn't actually react to the tune you're playing though, and it's just a pre-baked animation. Yep, I've been staring at it constantly. Mine, however, does, and it uses the sound trigger that we have in Protopilot that connects to the microphone on your device. So some caveats here, and probably why the Spotify graphic is pre-rolled. As the sound trigger is using the microphone as the source of its sound, it will react to any sound that it hears and not just the song. Also, you'll have to preview the prototype on a device for it to work. Okay, with those obligatory disclaimers out of the way, let's get prototyping. Okay, so if you wanna follow along, you'll find a link to this Pi file in the comments. Okay, first things first, we need to import our audio file into our Pi file. For reasons of copyright, I can't distribute the audio in this PAL file for you, so you'll have to find your own MP3 or WAV file. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to do that is to come over to the media menu here, and we're gonna choose audio, and we're gonna find our audio file, open it up, and when you bring an audio file into ProPy, it will just bring in a kind of representative graphic of your, of your audio file. So we can just sit that over here on the left-hand side, and I'm just gonna lock it off as well. Okay, so that's our audio file imported. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create what I call the play and pause manager. And I call it a manager as it manages all of the interactions that will need to happen when the song plays and pauses. And doing things like managers is a really great way for centralizing all of your responses. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna to do to do that is we're gonna come over to the variables panel and we're gonna add a variable for the scene. And I'm gonna name that start music. By default, we get a number variable, which is exactly what we want. Next up, we need to come to the interactions panel and I'm gonna add a detect trigger. With the detect trigger, I'm gonna target that variable we just created. Okay, and within this detect trigger, I'm gonna add a condition. I'm gonna name the condition play. And within the condition properties here, I'm going to select my start music variable. And I'm gonna leave it at equals and I wanna look for a value of one. So basically the start music variable is going to be the thing that triggers whether the music's playing or not. So if the value is one, then the music is playing. And if the value is zero, then the music is not playing or paused. Okay, so within this condition, we're now gonna add all of the things that we need to happen when we want to play the audio file, okay? So the first thing we need to do is add a playback response. And I'm gonna choose the audio file that I imported. By default, you'll see the action is set to play, so that's fine, that's exactly what we want here. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add a opacity. And I'm gonna find my sound bars. So this is the graphic that we're using for the graphic equalizer. And by default, soundbars is set at zero opacity. So we're just gonna bring the opacity up to 100. Okay, next up, I'm gonna add another opacity. And this time I'm gonna look for my pause icon. So obviously when the audio starts playing, we want to show the pause icon. So I'm gonna bring the opacity up to 100. Okay, I'm gonna add another opacity. This time, the play icon. And because we're showing pause, we want to hide the play icon, so I'm going to turn the opacity of play down to zero. Okay, so that's all we need to do in this first condition. So I'm gonna duplicate this condition. I'm going to rename it pause. And I'm gonna come into the condition properties here. I'm gonna change the value from one to zero. Okay, so for playback, we're gonna switch the action from play to pause. I'm actually gonna remove this whole opacity of the sound bars. I don't want to hide the sound bars again. We're gonna do something a little bit different with those. I'm just gonna delete that out. And then for these other two opacities, I just need to switch them around. So the pause icon will be going down to zero and the play icon will be coming up to 100. Okay, so to make this work, we need to attach a trigger to actually play our audio file. So we're just gonna do that on the 
on the first song, so the, the row of song one. So I'm gonna add a tap trigger here. I'm gonna find song one and select it. And then within the tap trigger, I'm going to add an assign response. And I'm gonna select my start music variable and I'm just going to assign a value of one. Remembering that one is the value that we're assigning to make the audio play. Okay, so we should have enough here just to test make sure our audio is working. So if you open up preview, and we're just going to tap this, the song one row here. Okay, so the audio is playing, and you can see that our play button down here has turned to the pause button. Okay, so let's just close that down. We're closing that down. We haven't actually built the ability to pause the audio yet. Okay, to be able to control the playback of the songs, we'll use the control bar. With the control bar, we'll be able to pause the music as well as continue playing. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to my triggers panel and add a tap trigger. And I'm gonna search for play pause. So I want this play pause container. Okay, within a tap trigger, I'm gonna add a condition. I'm gonna call this start music. So we're gonna use the variable we created earlier to drive all of the behaviors in our start music manager. All we need to do is change the value of the variable to either zero or one. Zero will be pausing the music and one will be playing the music. Okay, so within this condition, we're gonna choose the start music variable again. Okay, we're gonna come over to the value field, we're gonna add one. Okay, so within the condition, we're gonna add an assign and we're gonna target that music variable and we're gonna set the formula to zero. Okay, so next let's set up the condition to start the music. So we're gonna duplicate this condition. We're gonna come into the condition and change the value to zero. And then we're gonna to go to the assign and we're gonna change that formula to one. Okay, so let's go over to preview and give this a test. Okay, so I'm gonna come over to my control bar here. I'm gonna hit the play button. That's playing our music. And now we can hit the pause button and that's pause down music. Okay, cool. So we now have all our basic music playing functionality set up. Now let's create the graphic equalizer animation. Okay, so let's close down preview here. Okay, so next up, let's add a sound trigger. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a scale response and we're going to basically set up the animations for the three sound bars, okay? So I'm gonna target my first sound bar, which is called three bar one. And you can see here, we've got a special properties panel, which is asking us for a range. And the range it's asking us for is the sound range, so the amount of audio. So I did a bit of playing around try and get like a good a good animation. So I've gone with this range of 50 to 100. You can obviously play around with it and use whatever you see fit. And then map to the range. So between this audio range, we're going to scale the soundbar up and down. So we're gonna go from zero to 13. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this scale. I'm gonna look for my second bar, which is two bar, two bar two, and I'm gonna just vary the, the values here so we get a different animation on the, on the other bars so we get that kind of graphic equalizer effect. So I'm just gonna make this to go from 50 to 80, and I'm gonna change the height to 15, and then duplicate one more time and get the final bar, which is called one bar three. I don't know where I can make up these crazy names from. Um, nothing to do with all bar one, honestly. Okay, so we're gonna change, the, we're gonna vary this as well. So we're gonna change that to 90. And I think I'm gonna change that to 11. Okay, so at the moment, these, these scale responses are gonna run even when any sound is going on. Remember that the sound trigger is gonna be triggered when it hears anything from the microphone. And we actually want it only to be triggered when the music plays. So we need to put this inside of a condition. Okay, so I'm gonna add a condition. And again, as we have with everything else, it's going to 
hinge on the on this start music variable. So we're going to look for that. And we're going to look to see when that variable value is one, because that means our music is playing. Okay, so we're going to move our scale responses into that condition. Okay, so the final thing we want to do is set the height of the sound bars to a resting state size so that we know which song is selected. So if you have a look at Spotify, you'll see that when you pause a song, the sound bars just kind of animate down to these three little dots, and we just want to mimic that behavior. Okay, so let's come over to our detect trigger here, and inside the pause condition, we're going to add a scale response. And we want to choose three bar one here. And we're going to scale it to a size of three. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this scale response. I'm going to choose my second bar, so two bar two. And that's also going to be three. And then I'm going to do one more duplication here. And I'm going to look for my one bar three. And that's also going to be three. So let me just check that we've got three bar one, two bar two, and one bar three. Okay, so we need to test this now on a real device because the sound trigger only works when it's on a real device because remember it uses the microphone. So let's hop over to the device and see it in action. Okay, so there you go, a working graphic equalizer using the sound trigger. So that brings us to the end of this episode. If you like the video, then consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you next time.